Good afternoon, everybody. It's Joe here, and welcome to Lunch and Learn Live. Thought we'd have some groovy tunes as you arrive today. Why? Because it's fun. Oh, yes, it is. And I'm excited today because we have a special guest joining me today very soon. I'm going to introduce you to the lovely Rebecca Robertson. And we're going to be talking about all things financial independence today because it is wealth season here at one of many. Hooray! We are going to announce the winner of our competition that we've had for the last seven days. Thank you to all of the wonderful women who entered that competition. I can see one of them here with us already. Patricia, I can see you there. Hello. As you arrive, ladies, do say hello in the comments section. Let me know where in the world you are. And since it's lunch and learn, tell me what's for lunch. Oh yes, what's for lunch? We're gonna talk about money. I've brought back my flip chart from last week. If you didn't catch last week's edition, and that just looks like a big fat mess, you might want to catch last week's edition. It was very great. Go back and uh, check it out again. And uh, I will explain it a little bit today as well, for those of us who are here. We are talking wealth, and I'm going to be bringing on my good friend Rebecca Robertson very soon. So a big hello. Oh, Patricia says, I have such great energy. It makes me joyful already. Yay, I'm so glad. I'm in a joyful frame of mind today. Hello, Valerie. Good to see you. Bonjour en France. Michelle is eating bacon and kale for lunch. As you arrive, ladies, do say hello in the comments section. Let me know where in the world you are and what's for lunch. Hello, Helen. Good to see you. Ooh, oh, yum. Valerie's having cod courgette pasta with lemon flavored olive oil. Oh, yes. I can see Rebecca's face even though you can't and we're both a little envious of that lunch, I can tell. Um, Anne has, uh, my mum's ordered, my mum's corned beef pie. Oh wow, yum, that was good. Oh, Alison's just been stung by a wasp. I'm very sorry to hear that, Alison. Sending you lots of love, ouch. That does not sound fun. Well, darlings, I think it's time. Fiona is in West Oxfordshire having quiche and salad, Sinead says, oh yes, hello Sinead. Good to see you, my darling. Um, she's saying that Valerie's lunch sounds delightful, which I would have to agree with, absolutely have to agree with that. So let us jump in, my angels, let us jump in. I'm very excited because you're gonna see a new name uh, on the uh, comment section there, and that is the lovely Sinead Cosgrove, who is the newest member of the One of Many team. Hi, Sinead. Let's all give her a big welcome in the comment section. Um, Sinead is our newest customer services person, and she is going to be, you'll get to know her very well here on Facebook and also in the inbox. So she's going to be supporting us all. And uh, if you didn't hear my announcement, I don't know when I made, if I made the announcement here or somewhere else, but I can also see. Uh, the second newest member of our team, well, I suppose you will be the newest once you actually start, and that is the lovely Tracy Fuller, who is going to be my new assistant as of the 16th of August. Hooray! Vix, my lovely assistant, is moving into our marketing department, and Tracy is coming to help us out. So it's a great time to be meeting new people at one of many. Yes, it is. And a big welcome to everybody who's joined us today. Please do share uh, today's session if it inspires you with friends. We have so much awesome stuff to share and you're going to absolutely love it. We're going to be here together for about 40 minutes or so today. And we are going to dig in on some really important stuff about kind of the fear barrier that stops women investing and what to do it, uh, what to do it, what to do about it even. Now, last month, last week, I invited you to enter my competition where I was going to uh, announce a prize. You had to share the session um, to your own Facebook page, tag five friends and send me a video telling me why you should join. Uh, join. God, I have no vocabulary today. <laughs> Just as well I have a guest and I don't actually have to teach today. That's all I can say. Um, but uh, you were going to send me a video telling me why you should win a place on our Be Wealth 
virtual retreat. It's coming up on October the 8th and 9th, and uh, tickets are normally £695 for our virtual retreat. And I am giving away a prize of a place on that retreat, and it's happening today. Thank you for all of your fabulous entries. Um, and I've got, I've got to let you out a little, you know, a little secret. I was so inspired. I sat here for about half an hour and then that kind of went into 45 minutes while I was talking with Greg about these entries. Like it was ridiculous how long it really took me to look, look and try and decide. Um, and I got stuck with three people. So I decided I'm the boss. I get to decide how many prizes there are. So instead of one prize, today I'm giving away three. Three places on Be Wealth Virtual. So stick around to the end today and I will be announcing those prizes. And if today inspires you in the meantime, please tag your friends and uh, tag your friends and um, share, the, share the video to your page. Let's get this out there because we've got a mission to equip a million women with these tools, ladies, and we can't do it alone. So when you share, it really helps us to do that. So we're very, very excited today. So having said all of that, uh, also we have our live workshop, our four-hour workshop, a half-day workshop coming up next Wednesday. It's called Wealth Insights, and it's an introduction to how we approach wealth here at One of Many. It's an amazing uh, four-hour experiential workshop where you'll start to shift some of your uh, stuff around wealth. So you can get yourself registered for that. It is completely free. So again, please share it with your friends. It's at oneofmany.co.uk forward slash wealth is where you need to go to get registered for that. That's oneofmany.co.uk forward slash wealth and you can get registered for Wealth Insights. It's a completely free four-hour workshop. We do a lot of amazing free stuff here at One of Many if you're new to the community and we would love to have you um, join us for that. Jane has just popped the link in the comment section for you so you can get registered for that too. And because we have this coming up, we are in our wealth season. We're talking all things money over this little kind of month-long window. And I am super excited today to be welcoming the wonderful Rebecca Robertson. Now, Rebecca is a great friend of mine. We met at, our, at the very first Be Wealth that we did here at One of Many, we were looking for a financial advisor, a financial planner to come and be one of our wealth mentors. You see, at our um, retreats, both virtual and in person, we have a series of experts, a group of experts who are brilliant at whatever their thing is, come along and just share their wisdom. They do it out of the kindness of their heart. Um, they come and offer personal, you know, sort of input and advice. And at our very first Be Wealth, Rebecca was one of those for us. And as soon as we met, I just thought, oh my God, this is the woman, because she was running Evolution Financial Planning, which is a powerful, a powerful financial uh, planning organization, a financial services organization, specifically focused on women and families, really helping women and families to find their financial independence and to work you know, with their partners powerfully if they have partners or, or independently if they're alone, to sort their money out and get empowered financially. And every chat that we've ever had, we're like, yeah, we're so aligned. Um, she has a brilliant book, which I highly recommend, and I know she's about to uh, re-release that, so highly recommend it, and some amazing online courses and a fabulous membership, which I'm sure she'll mention a little bit as we're having a chat today. But we are very, very excited to be having Rebecca here with us, and I shall bring her to your screen now. There she is, the lovely Rebecca Robertson. Hello, darling. You look frozen. There we are. It's kind of woken you up now. How are you, darling? You need to unmute yourself, though. I think, are you muted at your end? Like tech disaster. Hello. <laughs> Hi. My, my, I was watching you talk on my phone and seeing the comments, and then I noticed that, oh, anyway, my, my internet froze. So here I am. It's all good. <laughs> We've got you now. We've got you now. And a big welcome, oh. darling. It's so good to have you. Hi. Thank you. That was a lovely. I heard half the build-up, and then it probably went silent, and then it probably got nothing from me. Great build-up, and then nothing. <laughs> That's all um, right. Yes, uh, I, I'm a professional. I can keep rolling until it looks like you're back. It's all good. I'm back. I'm all good. One yeah, we've known each other a long time, right? That you're, a, you're a crazy horse lover as well. And whenever whenever you're not helping women sort out their finances, you're out riding your beautiful horse. 
Yeah, I, I do love my horses. They're a great, actually one of my, many encouraged me to take my horse riding back up again. Um, I was in part of the, the Lead the Change programme and I kept getting asked the question, like, how do you spend your time? Um, and I was just either working or mum or, or wife and I was there was nothing for me. Mm. Um, and that was about three years ago now, maybe a bit longer. Yeah. Um, and I always wanted to buy my own since I was a little girl and I wasn't able to um so I bought my first my first own horse um about 18 months ago and yeah I love him oh it's so beautiful it's so beautiful I didn't mention that actually yes because after you'd been a mentor for us for a while you went and did lead the change for yourself right it was so beautiful yeah. to have you in the community and see you on that journey just wonderful just wonderful. yeah it's, it massively helped me and it's mm -hmm. it's amazing the ripple effect that you probably don't see um because then I've been able to use the one of many tools that I've learned uh, within my communities and pass on that sort of baton yeah um so yeah Love That's it. it. Love right? one of many. Spreading the mission, spreading the word. I love it. I absolutely love it. So, darling, I remember, and I mentioned this to you before we started, Rebecca and I had a conversation. It was a couple of years ago now as we were getting ready for Be Wealth because Rebecca does a session for us in our Wealth in Action series, which happens after the Be Wealth retreat. There's a 10-week um, implementation series that we do, and we get Rebecca to do the, the one on all the practical stuff, getting started, mm. you know, with um, uh, towards financial independence and so forth. And, um, and we had a really good chat and it was at that moment where you kind of shared with me that, that there's a real fear barrier for women and perhaps men and women alike, but especially for women who we particularly work with when it comes to that shift. And last week, and I'll just recap it for the girls a, a little, but last week we shared the stages of wealth model team. If you missed that Facebook live, go back and watch it. I won't go through the whole thing again. But we talked about how there's instability at the bottom of the pyramid and then you have to learn accountability to get yourself to stability. Stability is where your money in equals your money out. So you're at net zero every month. Then you've got to learn the lesson of getting into flow to get yourself to security because that will mobilize a little more money. So this is where your income is greater than your expenses. You've got yourself a rainy day fund put aside. You've got insurances and, and you're safe and sound. If you lost your job, you'd be okay for at least three months until you sort something out, right? Um, so uh, a lot of us were at security. We're kind of okay, had a bit of savings. The next level up, we've got to learn the lesson of investment to achieve financial independence. And financial independence is where our income from assets – so either from stocks, shares, property, you know, whatever asset class it could be, our um, asset income is greater than our expenses. So this is where we can choose to stop working if we want to, because the money we earn from our assets is greater than our expenses. Now, when you and I were talking back, we were talking about the fact that here between security and independence is a big fear barrier that comes up. And a lot of yeah. women kind of get stuck at security, right? Why yeah. do you think that is? Well, there's a there's a big leap between the two. Um, you know, either you're if you're somebody that's employed that's gone to self-employed running your own business, we recognise there's a big psychologically there's a big leap behind that, mm. and it's the same type of leap when you're going from security to independence because you're either thinking, well, I've not got enough money, or how could my X amount of money ever mean that I could be financially independent? And we're taught as a country, as a society to rely on winning the lottery, for example. Yes. Um, you know, like when I win the lottery kind of mentality. And most, not all, but a lot of people that win the lottery actually go bankrupt within the first five years. And that's because they're not taught how to look after this money. They're not taught how to look after this money to create assets. Mm. And that's the same thing. Even if you've, you know, read a few books or you've listened to a few webinars, unless you've made it part of, who you are and what you stand for, like a value base, this is who who you're now going to be, that transition from one to the next just becomes something that somebody else does. Mm. And it's not something that you or you can do. And quite often we have those limitations around our income and our earning potential. And again, if you put the two together, it just means there's very little action. Mm. Um and all the biggest thing is the enoughness buttons, the past expectations. I'm just going to grab my chair. I just realised I really want to sit mm. down and have a have a chat with you as you're saying. Tell me about this enoughness, but I like that enoughness buttons. 
Yeah, so th- there's massively with money, it's many enoughness buttons. And they're mm. either enoughness in terms of, okay, well, I don't earn enough. I don't have enough. I don't need to bother because I don't have enough. Mm. Um, or they're limitations that have been set from the past, which obviously you're the expert at talking about. Those expectations from our family as a society are generationally passed down to us as a baton of poorness to say, hey, mm. here's your baton of lack. Yeah. Go and pass it on to the rest of your generational family and leave a great legacy. Yeah. And I think as, as women, we talk about, you know, we're going to change society. And for me, it's something I'm very passionate about that this legacy, the gap between the rich and the poor, wealth gap is getting wider and wider and the pandemic has caused that even more. Um, So as women, we really have to put these limitations, these fear buttons, these enoughness buttons aside and really look at ourselves and see what is stopping us from moving forward. Mm. Um, And what what happens really, it, it doesn't happen overnight. So people don't go from a have being financially independent like that mm. because unless they even if they've got a massive in- inheritance they still have to do the right things with it. Yeah, otherwise it's just um, money sitting in the bank account, right? They're still at a secure, well, even a security or a stability mindset. We've got to get ourselves up there, right? And that's the thing. A lot of people go the oh the practical stuff first, right? Financially, mm. I need to do this these things to be mean that I'm financially independent but actually the mindset piece does come first because otherwise you're not in the right place to take the right actions Mm. um so it doesn't happen overnight if you can imagine when you started work and you're a a doctor or you work in a pharmacist or you start your business you don't go from earning you know 100 grand a year kind of salary 200 grand a year if you know that'd be great if you can Mm. um you go with just sort of like you know the little wheels on the side to support you and you've got maybe a mentor and you you gradually start to grow and that's what happens that organic growth whether it's education whether it's the enoughness buttons are starting to peel away and we always talk about an onion in one of many so Mm. there's a bit of an onion of layers there Mm. um then you start to then make different decisions around what's around you and it's those incremental small changes that create the shifts that people want to see and quite often they can be very small things to start off with and then after a year two years then you start to see oh my god how far have I come and you look back and you realize wow I'm not the same version as I was a few years ago and I'm not making the same decisions and I think that's what I see for a lot of people that go through the one of many process, they sort of, the diversion of themselves is not making the same financial decisions. Mm. And a lot of that does come from within. Mm. Um, so it's really around the enoughness and the education. And it is a very, it can be a bit slow because there is no magic pill in any of this, right? Mm. You, you can't just read one book and, you know, wow, I know I know everything I need to know because it, it's, it's a gradual process. Mm. Um there was a there is a, a thing around financial pressure. Yeah. Um, and at the moment there's a lot of financial pressure to go and do more with your kids, for example, to go mm. on more holidays, to do more stuff. Yeah, right. Um, because you've we've not done anything for so long. Um, or it's financial pressure in the terms of keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah. Um, and so I see a lot of people are actually misaligned with their finances. They don't really understand their own values. Well, they do, but they've not really thought about it. Therefore, they're acting and they're spending in a different way. So they might turn around and say to me something, well, I can't afford to do this or I can't afford to do that. And that could be invest. It could be their pension. It could be some of the practical stuff. But they're choosing to spend a certain other way that is actually not necessarily making them happy and they don't oh, yeah, recognize I think it's it. It's a really profound piece. You know, I remember, I remember very specifically being at a Wealth Insights once and talking to, um, to one of our, she's now a graduate of Lead the Change, but she was, it was right at the beginning of her journey. She hadn't done anything with us. Um, and she was really like, oh, she was like, I really want to transform my financial situation, but I can't afford this. I can't afford the program. I can't, I can't do this. And and I said, well, where are you spending your money at the moment? She said, well, I've got two kids. I've got two teenagers and I'm spending money on them and, um, you know, holidays and all of that kind of stuff. I'm like, okay, so 
this is where I think real mumming comes into play. You actually have to make the choices about mm. the kind of upbringing and the lessons that you want to give them. Do you want to leave them with the lesson that the right kind of trainers and a new pair of jeans? Because if you mm. think about it, like sort of, you know, back then I was saying to her, for the amount that you're going to be spending on this program, it's, you know, a couple of pairs, a few pairs of trainers and a couple of pairs of jeans and, you know, maybe a weekend away is what you're going to be putting aside. It's not yeah. in the scheme of things. But at the moment, by saying a yes to everything for your kids, you're actually, you know, robbing them of this possibility of the future. And I think that's what you're saying, right? Like we have these financial pressures on us, but it's because we're living out of alignment with our true values. We're, we're thinking yeah. it's more important to keep up with the Joneses. It's more important to give our kids everything. It's more important to whatever than it yeah. is to actually reallocate our resources towards something that is uh, important for us, like put something aside in our pension pots or put something aside for our education or whatever it might be. Is that what you mean? Exactly what I mean. And I've, I've actually, my, my, the book that you mentioned earlier, I've republished it and it's all, the, the title of it is how to live a, a financial abundant life because it's actually, that to me is what it's all about mm. because you can't, you, you can have all the money in the world, but what a lot of people do, and I've seen this, I've been, I've been working in financial services for 21 years. I've worked with clients from all kinds of backgrounds, like new money, old money, you know, big salaries, small salaries, and people live within their means. So we get a bonus at work. And the first thing we do, even before we've got it in our bank account, is we're figuring out how we can spend it, right? Yeah. Oh, great, I can go and buy that new handbag, or I can go and book that holiday, and we can go and do all this stuff. And I just ask the question, is that really what's important? And I know from myself, from the values perspective that for me to grow as a person um, I'm often in a program or in a course or have a mentor and I pay for that and I wouldn't be the version that I am now if I had not invested now investing in yourself you have to make sure that it's something that you want to do and you're passionate about it mm. but that that's an example where you have a misalignment or it might be for example that your health and your well-being is very important to you um but you spend more money on takeaways and wine <laughs> than what you do actually for a um you know gym membership or getting a personal trainer i'm not sure if my wi-fi is playing up hopefully no, i've caught good. up now well, it's, i'm it's good all, okay all good out, maybe yeah. maybe it's Okay, cool. Um, so you're not getting, um, you know, not getting help. So, for example, for me recently, I'm I'm vegetarian and I wanted to eat more healthily. So I got Hello Fresh, and actually, it wasn't working for me. I was wasting a lot of the money. So now I'm looking at alternatives. I'm getting someone to come into the house to help me potentially, because I'm just not good at that kind of stuff. Mm. But if I want to have you know eat more healthily and not eat rubbish and have more energy and do more of what I want to be doing in the world then I need to also recognize where I need to invest in terms of getting that help mm. so investing is a really sort of loose word mm. um assets are a very loose word I hear marketing people talk about marketing assets and I'm like it's not an asset <laughs> um, unless it's unless it's giving you a return so an asset mm. terminology is a, is a is an item or property that you own that is giving you a return of investment, money back, and covering its costs. Mm. That's the right actual. I know you love like a Wikipedia. Love a definition. Quote. Love a good yeah. definition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Rebecca, so it's working you know, out what's. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, um, I was just going to say. So for people who are um, who are you know thinking about thinking about this and going, yeah, well. It is important to me, right, moving from security to independence or, or, or starting to or at least moving up the stages of wealth for myself is important for me. Um, this particular one, this kind of security to, it, to independence piece, when we look at that fear barrier, how do you make progress? I mean, you know, yes, obviously, I know you send a lot of people along to us, they go sort your mindset out and then you'll have the fear piece sorted out. But then... The actual practicals, because there is a there is a um, a lot to be said for just that gradual, you know, the gradual choice after choice after choice, which does then develop into that organic growth that you talked about. Mm. When eventually you look back and two years later, you're making wildly different financial decisions, and you're starting now to you are heading towards independence or even achieving it. So, how do you make progress, even if you are afraid of making a mistake to start with? How do you sort of support people in that mm. way to do that? 
normally I would advise them to take one thing at a time, which I know sounds really silly, but um, the overwhelm for a lot of people is just the biggest thing. And for mm. women, what I notice is that we get emails, not just a couple of sentences saying, hey, I need help with my finances. They they just need, like, they literally list, like, 30 or 40 things. Their, their minds are going, like, 100 to the dozen because it's not just should I repair my mortgage or start investing or it's not just what should I do with this pension. They, within that, there's, like, 30 questions. Um, <laughs> Which so is there's good, a lot right? of Because it shows that women are already thinking about the, at least they're aware and they're thinking about it and they've got the questions. That's got to be a good starting place, right? Speaking of questions, yeah. ladies, if you have any questions as Rebecca's speaking, put them in the comments section. Let us know how this is landing with a thumbs up, some love for Rebecca, and put your questions in because I'll uh, take some questions here in a second as well. So you're getting these big, long emails full of questions, right? Yeah, right. And and that's a good sign because they've actually they've taken the brave step to say, hey, oh, I need some help. I've got a lot of questions here. That's great. There's a lot of women that aren't doing that because mm. they're just in overwhelm. Um, and they might be thinking, OK, well, I can't afford to work with a financial advisor or I can't I don't have enough money because I'm not, you know, the enoughness maybe possibly starts to kick in. So I think just taking one thing at a time um, and I talk about having focus months. So give yourself an objective for the whole month and say, by the end of the month, I'm going to have achieved this. Mm. And it goes back to the accountability piece, mm. because at the end of the day, if you then tell people that's what you're going to do, whether it's your partner, your best friend, a buddy, a business colleague, um, then you can say, OK, by the end of the month, I'm going to have sorted out my work pension or I'm going to look at how I can start saving more. Or I'm going to start setting some budgets and some uh, things for the kids. I know they need to start sort of maybe set up their own account and sort out their pocket money. And rather than having all those things in your head, thinking I've got to do those all right now, just take one thing at a time. And mm. what starts to happen for a lot of people that have been in procrastination for a long time, because generally they have been, is they then start to go, okay, that wasn't as bad as yeah. I thought it was going to be. It's all right. Nobody, <laughs> nobody's died. Everyone's good. Um, and they learn something and they feel good about it. And the thing that you mentioned is really important because that that fear around getting it wrong yeah. is often a, a, a big fear uh, base in terms of overwhelm that stops them from moving forward. Mm. And, and my message is, especially for women that are older, who then think it's there's pointless. I, no, why should I bother? Late. I'm too old. I'm never going to get there anyway. Every every step in the you know whatever direction is still a step in the right direction because at the end of the day, if you're taking no action, then you're not going to be any further forward. At least mm. if it's a step in a step forward, um, then it's better than nothing. And you just need to start to learn to trust yourself. And yeah, you might make the odd mistake. Like okay, I'm going to start um, investing myself, and I've picked a particular fund and okay, what's the worst that could happen? Yes, the funds could lose money, but that's the case with any fund, right? Like that's mm. that's that, that's that's not, that's not impossible in any shape or form for any scenario. Mm. Um, and at least one year later, you've had the education on what you did wrong. Yes. Whereas do it, and then the next time you go, okay, well, I know not to do this or this now. So, and, and the next year you have better returns. You're learning. And that's more important than sitting there doing nothing. <laughs> it's so, so true it's so so true provided you learn from everything do you know and 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 it's good I think to learn the lessons with small amounts rather yeah. than big ones because trust me when I say that Greg and I Greg and I procrastinated on doing anything for a really long time until we had a heap of cash because we were really good at generating cash in our business early on and then we invested it all in uh in, in his brother's business and uh had um some challenges with that so uh you know when it's to the tune of small amounts rather than large amounts and then you can learn the lessons of not putting all your eggs in one basket and all of those kind of things exactly it's, yeah uh, it's exactly very smart it's very very smart i saw here that um valerie is saying i've got no problem investing in properties but as one would say it's putting all my eggs in the same basket other investments scare me for lack of knowledge and that's what you're saying it's kind of like you don't have to know everything right you just start incrementally into something under the, under the tutelage or the advice of somebody like yourself would be a really smart thing right someone who can help yeah. you hold your hand but then you will yeah. learn right along the way 
Yeah, and, and there's different levels of that. So you could, you know, go and spend 10 minutes on YouTube. I'd be very careful, by the way, what you, what you don't delve into on YouTube. But you could go onto Amazon and do some search for some books. You could ask in the community if there's any podcasts to listen to. And it's just a, a, a gradual thing. Like, I love property as an asset. It's great. But when you've got a client who's got, say, that 200 grand and they've got, that's all they've got, that's their worldly savings, Val- Valerie, it was Valerie, wasn't it? Valerie, yeah. Right, in that you're putting, if that particular property in that particular area, the property price is slumped or we had a recession or you needed to sell it quickly, that kind of thing is, is difficult. And there's lots more regulation on rentals now. It's not as, you know, it's not as straightforward as it, as it used to be. Whereas if you invested in a multi-asset fund, for example, that can include a fund that is a property fund, but that particular property fund is potentially invested in about maybe 100 to 250 different property businesses or companies Mm. that operate in the property asset world and they derive a yield or an income from that money. So there's, it's just about you know, you're not you, you and some of you listening to this probably didn't even know that existed. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's a huge amount of knowledge out there, and there's different ways of doing it. And not everyone's the same. It, people want to do things slightly differently, and they've got a different attitude to risk. And that's another issue for a lot of women. They're worried about the risk. So it's the knowledge, mm. and therefore, if I'm going to make a mistake, and I don't, I, I'm worried about this risk. So you'll see, and a lot of documentation at the bottom of investment type of uh, documentation it says you know your investments are at risk um and again it's i'm not saying there isn't any risk there there is i mean but if i look at the global pandemic and the advice i gave my clients um all my clients made money last year there was one that was a, a little bit short she she made enough like she but she had such big losses because she was a very high risk taker. She was a highest mm. risk profile um, that she just sort of got by in terms of making her money back towards the end of the last year. But the rest of my clients, we're talking, you know, quite a few clients here. We're not talking two or three, we're 60, 70 clients all made money last year in a global pandemic. Mm. Um, so it's about making calculated education, educated risk taking Mm. um, where you're making informed decisions and you Mm. understand what level of risk you're taking. Mm. Um, And I think I cover that in a bit more detail in the Wealth Insights videos, actually. But um, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's interesting. Helen's saying, you know, my procrastination is currently 20 years and counting for my pension mainly for because of fear of choosing the wrong one, which is exactly what you're talking about, right? Our fears stop us from making any choice. And then here we find ourselves 20 years later, still in the same situation. So if that's the case, Helen, like it sounds to me, my love, what you need to do is go head first into the fear and let go because it's not the fear of what's happening in this moment. And it's this is something I'll talk about at Wealth Insights next Wednesday. These fears that stop us, it's not the fear, what you're talking about right now, Helen, if I, I mean, I've, I've not spoken to you, but my mind read on this would be, it's nothing to do with the fear of starting or maintaining a pension. That is not what the fear is about. This is fear that's going to be coming back from your child, it'll either be from your childhood or possibly inherited from your parents or even your grandparents. Like sometimes this comes down family lines. If someone a long time ago lost a lot of money or had a tough time, that fear can be, like you said, it's the baton, the legacy, right? Here's the poor baton, here's the fear baton can get handed from generation to generation. Sometimes it happens to us, you know, um, that, uh, that, you know, um, uh, if, if our parents, when we're young, have a really tough time financially and we get really poor and then we're like, right, God, no, never gonna, I'm never going to go back there. Or um, It's that fear that sometimes happens because of what occurs to us when we're young. So what feels like it's fear about the future is actually usually fear about what's happened in the past. And if you can let go of that, it gives you freedom to be courageous enough to reach out to someone like Rebecca and say, okay, here's my 30 points on all of the things I'm worried about. <laughs> Help, where do I start, right? Um, and and it might be, I just got to get started with the pension and that becomes the month of the pension. I think it's yeah. really critical, right? Yeah, and, and there's also this thing about um, the, the, the worth, what we're worth. So um, 
in terms of like, for example, a pension or making decisions around a pension or any of our money decisions, it might be that when we were brought up, we were brought up in an environment where money wasn't really talked about yeah. or money wasn't really a thing. Like it was just, you know, a bit of a taboo subject. Yeah. So then we, we then think to ourselves, okay, well, I'm, I'm not worthy of money. So I just mm. won't bother making any decisions because mm. I'm not worthy of it. Mm. Or there can be from an education perspective, especially around subjects like maths at school, or yeah. if you were belittled at school or in an educational background, where then you're made to feel that actually from an enoughness or worthiness perspective, then you shouldn't bother making any decisions around money. And that that can roll into not so much things like budgeting as such or like the food bill, but some bigger decisions. Mm. Um and then some other people, they, they, they don't trust their instinct. They don't trust themselves. With, and it can be not just with money. They, you might be seeing that in other ways and other things of your life. And it just happens that you're also doing it with pensions and, and your money. Yeah. So it might be that you know you need to move house or you need to sell your car or that you want to start a course or a program or you want to do something else. Um, but you're procrastinating and you're not, you're just not making decisions in life in general. Mm. Um, so there's there's lots of ways that things will show up that it will show you that you're not moving forward. Mm. And it's just about making one step at a time. At the end of the day, we all have a responsibility, I feel, as women to show up when it comes to money and financial independence. And we just got to say to ourselves, what is my version of the next level? Like, mm. I don't need to be, you know, a princess in a castle and have you know a, a vision board that is blowing our minds of having you know complete abundance and a yacht and living in a mansion that's not everyone's version of mm. what is wealth right mm. everyone's su success vision is very different and I just asked the question what is your next step what is your next vision so rather sometimes than thinking of what 20 steps ahead could be yeah. and what you want things to be look like in 10 or 20 years time from a vision. I, I love that. That's great. Taking a real step back. But if you're in a real place of procrastination, you're not making decisions, you really are struggling, then just look at six months. Just look at yeah. three months. Just think about where would you want to be in a few months time and just make those small steps right now. So if it's loads of envelopes sitting in drawers, you've not rang, rung the pension company, you have not in the statement in ages and you keep meaning to ring them, like whatever it might be, you've got some bank accounts and you know you've got your money all over the place and you're not sure where everything is at then just start an auditing process. A lot of these women are very clever, very educated, but they just don't pick up the phone. They yeah. don't start making notes. Yeah. And often that's the first thing that when you go to see a financial advisor or a money coach of any description, they're going to ask, okay, where are you at? Yeah. What, what have you got and where is it at? Um, and it's one of the big, the biggest jobs. If you haven't looked at that, is to then go and go, okay, I've got to overcome myself because they're going to make me do it now. <laughs> um, so by just writing things down in a notebook, um, you know, you've mentioned my planner before. I've got a planner on, on on Amazon, but you could just get a normal notebook. You could get a spreadsheet if they're not too scary for you, and just like a shopping list, list everything out and make yeah, notes next get to it. Started. Just start somewhere and. Yeah gradually bit by bit it will become easier i love it i absolutely love it ladies if if you're noticing that your fear or your worries are going to stop you from starting do come along to wealth insights next wednesday because that'll be a really great opportunity to dig in about that stuff a little bit the whole latter half of the section we look at emotions around money we look at our limiting beliefs around money the cultural paradigm that we live in and our own personal paradigm when it comes to this stuff so the second half of the session, we really focus on that. Um, you can get registered at oneofmany.co.uk forward slash wealth. And it's a four hour, completely free introductory workshop next Wednesday morning, the whatever that is, 6th or 2nd, 2nd of August, something like that. Uh, next um, Wednesday, that's the 4th because my birthday's fourth. on the 3rd. Oh, <laughs> yay, happy birthday for Tuesday. So it's Thank on you. the 4th of August. Thank you, my love. Um, now, I've got another final question for you, which I know, which comes up a lot in our community, mm. um, which is how how do you advise people? What's your thoughts on how to um, handle joint finances? Oh, hello. Hi, I've got two people just snuck in. Look, come and say hello. Hi. Oh, it's Rose hello. 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 Oh, it's going to be money with all of the ladies. Hi. Going.
Yeah, we can't see the ladies. And there's Greg. That's my husband, Greg. If you haven't met Greg before. I have look, met Greg. It looks like we coordinated our outfits today, doesn't it? You got like the right, yes, all portrait. brandies. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, brand. thank you for my cup of tea. That's very kind. She's grown so much. Speaking about partners, um, you, you, you go now, darling. I've got to keep talking to the ladies, but I love you and I'll come and give you a cuddle in about 10 minutes, okay? Bye, sweetie pie. Have fun. She's grown uh, so much. Oh, my God. I know. Hasn't she? Since you've seen her, she's just uh, yeah. nuts. She's so grown up. She would have seen her in a little ballet thing when they put her hair back and in a little bun. She looked like she was about six or something. It's crazy. Went until they're 13 and shouting at you. Oh, don't. No, no. My, no, don't. Don't. Um, anyway, my question was, in relationship to family, um, what do you do? Like some, I know some women who come into our community, their partner handles the money and they're not even really present to it, but they're aware yeah. that they are disempowered financially around that. That's version yeah. one. Other yeah. versions are women who've been divorced but haven't got the education around finance and that they might have got something in the divorce settlement. Mm. Now they're like, what the hell do I do with it? Some yeah. women feel like they should have joint finances. Some feel like, the, you know, the messaging out there is absolutely don't have joint finances. You should do it all by yourself. What do you feel yeah. about that? What's your point of view about, uh, you know, women in partnership? What do you think? I get asked this a lot. I actually do a lot of um, comments on press about this subject mm. um, in very, you know, ladies' magazines and that that kind of thing. And my message really is: is it's about you finding a comfortable ground where you don't feel disempowered and you feel that it is a joint decision. Mm. And you know, you, you some people go into relationships where. Um, you know, they've got women have got more money because there is this assumption that, OK, the man's going to have more money. But actually, a lot of clients that I come across, actually, that they might be a musician. The man might be a musician mm. or something like that. And she's like a top lawyer in mm. London. And actually, the conversation is the other way around and having to say, hey, I'm contributing more here. And they're in relationships where the other the, the, the male partner you know or magician might maybe a female partner mm. um are in a situation where they're basically being disabled disenabled by their alpha female partner so mm. you know we have to sort of take gender out of this a little bit and mm. talk about it from a, a an, an equal perspective mm. so particularly for those women who are in a situation where they may be in a long, longer relationship, they may be slightly older and generationally they don't come from this place of their finances are equal. They may have spent many years looking after their children um, and they've now grown up and they've, you know, the empty nest kind of situation where they're now going, what do I do next? Um, and it's really hard for those women to, to, especially if they're seeing such change and they can feel themselves changing. Um, and I found that myself. I've been with my partner when I went through the, the change. I was uh, We've been together 21 years now. So we're talking about 19 years we've been together. And, you know, regardless of age, that's still from 19 to like 38, 30, 39-ish. Um, that's a long time. There's a lot happened in those 20 <laughs> years, right? Um, and there's, we've had children. We've bought houses. We've done so much in that that time frame so for them me to um for, it wasn't difficult for me to have these conversations because I, I i was the one doing making the financial decisions um with him because i was part of the process but that for those women who aren't part of that process but then after 20 odd 30 years to then come forward and say i want to do things differently mm. When you're talking to somebody that's never had that kind of conversation with you, it, it's, it's very difficult for the, the, the other person to understand where they're coming from. So I think you need to initially ask the question, what's your objective? Mm. Do you just want control? Do you just want to have your say? Do you just want to be heard? Or do you want the finances to be in a position where you feel like you are, it, it, is, it is joint? Mm. And therefore, what would that actually look like for you? Does that mean that you have a joint account? And, you know, there's a certain amount paid into that joint account or is it that actually their salary is all paid into a joint account and you pay, you, you get paid a salary like they get paid a salary and your your business, if you like, if you see it from a limited company business perspective, their salary is like your, I don't know, 
let's say Mr. and Mrs. Income. Smith Incorporated, yeah. Yeah. it goes into a joint account like a, a, a dividend or an income would be into a pot. And then you go, okay, we're both going to get paid equally after bills have been paid. Like, mm. w- to what degree do you expect it? And I, mm. for me, I don't really like the scenario of females getting an allowance. And we have to be very careful around this subject now going forward because there is actually a bill that's been passed which um, regardless of religious backgrounds or, you know, your education backgrounds, you can, if you're financially disabling somebody for childcare reasons, any kind of financial reasons, it's a form of financial abuse. Um, and it's, they can, they can actually be taken to criminal court um, and, and sent to prison. This is becoming quite a serious subject now. Yeah, wow. Um, and there is quite a few people in the financial services industry trying to educate more financial advisors so that we can spread this message more clearly. So it's quite a serious subject because there's actually a lot of women that we're not just talking about they're not involved, they're actually being blackmailed, gaslighted, manipulated and financially basically they are completely stuck Mm. um and so we're not just talking about oh can I have some money please I want to go shopping and him him or her saying yes or no we're talking about you can't leave the house you can't do anything on your own Mm. you're you're not you're not going to go to work you're not going to get an education you're not going to go and get a job that can be that's classed as financially disabling people Mm. so there is that one end of the script the the spectrum Mm. and it's just being anyone anyone that hears this message that you're in that situation there is an awful lot of help out there there's a lot of charities that can help you And if that's you privately, confidentially message me and I will send you the links to them. So that that that's just sorry to go off on a little bit of a tangent there, Joe. It's really important to say, right, because there is, as you say, a whole spectrum from actual kind of financial abuse and disablement, which you need support. If you're in that trapped situation, reach out because you need that help right through to giving our power away at, you know, at the, um, you know, there and also being at the other end where we're the one earning the money and then how do we create partnership? You know, there is a huge spectrum here, but I think what you're saying is that we need to have, we need to have our own power and inspire in our partners their own power. We need to come together as two individuals with agency and talk about what works for us, right? It's not that women shouldn't entangle their finances with their partners or if you don't have joint partnerships, then your relationship isn't going to work. There's no blanket statement here. It's about no. absolutely kind of putting the, um, you know, that specific, uh, it's, it's conversation, right? We need to be able to talk yeah. to our partners about money. And as someone who, yeah. when Greg and I first got together, we, we started conversations about money and we ended up on different sides of the suburb oftentimes like not just I had to leave the the room but I had to leave the house and then get as far away from him as was humanly possible to now where we are able to have conversations about we had the loveliest conversation about wealth over dinner um just a couple of nights ago and and we we do joint finances we always have Mm because we've done business together as well um um but you know it's it's it, you have to be able to talk whether you're together apart yeah. somewhat together somewhat it comes down to communication do you know definitely otherwise there's a lot of resentment it can mm. be resentment on both sides one mm. because I'm doing all the work and you're doing nothing mm. or one because you're providing everything and you're not letting me do anything yeah um so you have to sort of see it as like as a, a um, family incorporated and yeah. you're, you're making like board decisions together that's the yeah. best way to describe it yeah. one one version I do quite like and it does this not for everybody is if you've got one person earning let's just say twice as much as the other and the other person's obviously therefore earning less, mm. then what you can do is you take a, a equal percentage. So let's just say they're earning 50% more, then mm. they pay 50% more of the outgoing. So you proportionately, mm. by percentage, take the outgoings and you say, okay, well, you're getting paid 50% more than I do. You can pay 50% more of the proportion of the outgoing. So rather than going 50-50 mm. and then the female's left or the male's left with more and it's disproportionate to their income, then you can basically equally disproportionate 
dis distribute it based on their percentage of their outgoings. What tends to happen is, is, is in a normal scenario is you have the male earning more, not always, but some mm. like that, like in a conventional sense. Female takes a step back because they're having children, possibly earn less because of it. And then therefore what they end up paying for is all the extra niceties. So, so the holidays and mm. the days out. But what they don't do is they don't do their financial planning because mm. they almost abdicate because they're the, their partners doing the bigger decisions in some circumstances therefore they aren't in a position to make bigger financial decisions and I would just my message to those women is just because you're working part-time and you're not earning anymore doesn't mean you can't be a fierce financial female to yeah. empower your family incorporated to do more yeah. um and so yeah there's this this there's, there's not one rule for all in this it really does depend and again it's looking at what does your next level look like for you and your family personally yeah i love it this has been such a fascinating conversation rebecca there's been loads of comments as um as you've been sharing there i wonder if afterwards you could um come back in and maybe put some links to those charities and services that you said about the financial um of course um uh financial sort of abuse financial what did you call it disablement um, because I think that's, uh, there's obviously some, um, uh, inquiries around that. So we'll stick that in the comments, ladies, afterwards. I will. But I think there's been some fabulous stuff we've talked about today. So we've talked about what stops us from investing, what stops us from going from that saving mentality to that investing mentality. We've talked about, you know, how to approach it in those small kind of incremental steps. We've talked about the importance of partnership with each other. Beck, it's been absolutely amazing chatting <laughs> to you today. If the ladies want to reach out to you um, either as, you know, a potential IFA for them or I know you've got mm -hmm. your amazing membership community, which is a really fabulous way to get started on that investment journey, what's the best way for them to find you, honey? Um, so the IFA business is a website called Evolution Financial Planning. Um, so www.evolutionfinancialplanning. And um, I've also got a website, uh, rebeccarobertson.co.uk. Um, so yeah, go go and check those out. And hopefully, if you know, I can help. Mm, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And for those of you who are coming along to Be Wealth, You'll meet back a bit more there. She is um, one of our mentors and also hosts part of the Wealth in Action series as well. So you'll get to know her very, very well. So um, it. it's been marvellous to spend some time with you, darling. Thank you very much yeah. for your time today. No, thank you for having me. I always love it. And, um, yeah, I'll just say everyone that comes out of Wealth Insights always find it so enjoyable. The feedback year after year is amazing. So if that's the next step with you, I'd really suggest you go and check it out. Oh, thank you, darling. Love it. So my darlings, go um, get yourself registered for Wealth Insights if you're not, or tell your friends, tell your girlfriends, tell your cousins, tell your sisters, tell your aunts, tell your anyone. So send them along. Um, it's completely free. We're going to do four hours together from nine until one next Wednesday, Wednesday the 4th, we decided it was. One of many.co.uk forward slash wealth is where you can get registered. We're going to talk a little about the stages of wealth. We're going to talk about emotions. We're going to talk about limiting beliefs. We're going to talk about getting started with investing. We're going to talk about valuing yourself and how important that is. We're going to have a look at a whole lot of stuff. It's going to be amazing. Having said that, I have a competition to announce the winners of. Oh, yes, I do. Last week, we invited you to share our Lunch and Learn Live with friends. And we had dozens of you doing that. So the first thing to say is a massive thank Thank you to everybody who shared um, who shared last week's Lunch and Learn Live with friends. We really are committed to getting our message out there in a big way. As you know, we do a lot of free stuff. I'm here every Tuesday doing Lunch and Learn Live, sharing new distinctions, teaching things, learning things, training things. We have guests along to help and support you as well. But not just the Lunch and Learn Lives. We also do these free big workshops, you know, quite a few times a year. And um, it just really helps us achieve our mission when you share it and tell your friends and those people that you care about, um, about what we're up to. It really makes a massive difference for our ability to equip and empower more women um, in this context around their finances, but just generally in life as well. So massive thank you to everybody who shared. As I said right at the top of the session today, um, it was this morning's job to go through all of the entries and watch the videos to, of, of everybody who had entered uh, to win a place on our Be Wealth retreat, which is coming up in October. It's 8th and 9th of October this year two-day deep dive into uh, wealth and then a 10-week follow-up program 
of implementation, accountability, and support. So we don't just do the retreat. We have a big kind of 10-week transformation that is associated with that. And um, a lot of you entered that competition by sharing and sending in your videos. And this morning I sat down to watch the watch uh, the finalists and the girls had sent me through three finalists to have a look at. And as I was, I, you know, I watched these videos over and over and over again. And every single one, there was a reason that I wanted them to win. And, <laughs> and I couldn't decide. So I decided to completely change the rules. And rather than give away one place on Be Wealth, I'm giving away three places on Be Wealth. So rather than one place at 695 pounds, I'm giving away three places today. I'm the boss. I'm allowed to. <laughs> I think the whole marketing team thought I was absolutely mad when I said this, but this is what I'm going to do. So um, a massive thank you. Now, let me get the names here. I've written them down in my little notebook. So first of all, uh, one of the three places goes to the lovely, lovely Valerie Parkinson, who I know is here with us. Give her a big round of applause, a thumbs up and lots of love. Valerie sent us in a remarkable video sharing about how her daughter had watched last week's Lunch and Learn Live with her. Her daughter is 28 years old, I think she was. And she said um, she just feels that we need to be getting this message into, into the hands and the, and the minds and the, and the hearts of young women around the world um, and that she would love to win a place on Be Wealth for her daughter so that she can be equipped and empowered around money now and tell her friends about it and spread the word to that next generation. So Valerie, congratulations. Your daughter will be joining you on Be Wealth. So that is our first prize winner. Thank you very, very much. The second prize winner is uh, related to that. It was another daughter who, uh, who tugged on my heartstrings. And the second winner is Aisha Dia. Aisha, um, you sent in your beautiful video of yourself and your daughter, Savannah, who I think is about five, four or five. Um, and I know, uh, as you said in your video, you've recently been through a divorce. You came into the one of many community with that question in your mind about whether you should be with your husband or not. You gave it everything that you had and then decided, no, that it was time to, to be apart. And so you're a newly single parent um, and you're really wanting to set things up for you and your daughter for your future. And I really got that and I got the power of that. So the second prize winner is Aisha. Congratulations, my darling. You are going to be um, enjoying a place on, uh, on Be Wealth as well. And then the third winner, and it's not even first, second and third prize, right? Everybody gets the amazing prize. I can't believe I'm doing this. I just went a little bit nuts this morning. Um, I was talking it over with Greg and he said, why not do all of them? It's like, they go for it. Is there any reason not to? I'm like, no, only that I said there should be one. It's like, sometimes you're allowed to break your promises, Joe. Break them in a good way. It's all right. Um, and the third winner, this really inspired me. She was so animated when she was sharing her message. And the third winner is Patricia Coops, who again was um, nominating for a prize on behalf of a friend of hers. So she is in a program with a good friend of the one of many community, Catherine Watkin, um, who is learning how to grow her business and her accountability partner that she works with so closely is Tinika Zoot. I hope I said your name correctly, Tinika. Um, and Patricia was really inspired again by last week and just thought, they were often talking in their accountability partnerships about how it's their finances and, and their mindset around money that's holding them stuck from being able to take their message out into the world and getting out in a big way and doing what it is that they want to do in the world. And Tinica supports, um, uh, supports people in the maritime industry who've been, um, who've been in bullying kind of situations or having a tough time in their workplaces which sounded like such a noble kind of cause that she's up, up for. So, Tinica, congratulations. Compliments of your dear friend, Patricia. You too have won a place on Be Wealth. So, I was just overwhelmed with the generosity of intergenerational, like I want to share it with my daughter so she can set up, you know, Aisha who wanted to empower herself so she can be that example for her daughter. And then also um, to Patricia who wanted to share it with her dear friend. So, I couldn't decide between the finalists. So all of you are winners and every single one of you will be joining us live at Be Wealth in October. 
So congratulations to everybody. Thank you for entering. Thank you for sharing. And I've seen so many of you share also today um, for friends of yours that you think would be interested in today's session. Um, go ahead and, and tag your friends in today's session if Rebecca's session has been really uh, interesting and thought-provoking for you. You've got friends who want to hear that as well. So get out and spread that word around and, uh, and let's do this thing together. So my angels, it's two o'clock. We've had a long one today, but I think you'll agree with me. It has been worth every single minute. I look forward to seeing you on Wealth Insights next Wednesday morning from 9 until 1 p.m. If you can't make it live, do make sure you have registered for the event because we will send the recording out afterwards, but you have to be registered to get the recording. So register for the event, whether you can attend live or not. If you can, it's workshop style. There'll be special gift giveaways only for people attending live. So if you can get the morning off work or rearrange things to give yourself that gift of getting started transforming your financial situation, the world will be your oyster. Get yourselves registered at oneamany.co.uk forward slash wealth. And congratulations to Valerie, Patricia and Aisha and your friends and daughters that are benefiting from your awesome contribution today. Lots of love to you all, darlings. Bye now.